Okay, so um, my, my, my general views on 12 steps at uh, this video and also people that start to feel disconnected, maybe old timers who start to feel disconnected. And I've, I've been um, going to 12 step groups, um, several fellowships for about 15 years now. Um, and have been to 12-step meetings more or less every single day for those last 15 years, sometimes two to three meetings on average now, even during COVID, uh, averaging one to three meetings, uh, Zoom meetings a day uh, of, of, of different fellowships. So why? Um, I, there's a lot of different things. I've had a lot of different experience, even in different 12-step each 12-step fellowship is very different to another 12-step fellowship and the people in each group is different to another group. So I've had a, a fair amount of experience in all kinds of 12-step groups and other types of groups. The, um, so the thing that... Uh, this is the basis and I remember in my early days when I was watching Dr. David R. Hawkins' videos, he was um, uh, one, of, one of Bill W. sponsees and um, he said this thing, and from that moment that I, you know, sometimes when he would say things, Dr. Hawkins, it would just su suddenly, like, because I'd had this, I'd had these found spiritual experiences with him, so I had, you know, like my ego is totally like everything he says, there's no resistance to, zero resistance to it. It's like if you had a representative for God speak to you. I, 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 and you were 100% sure they were, like you'd have no, I'd have no resistance. Because I had such profound mystical experiences with him, there was zero doubt that he was an emissary for God, you know, and everything, and at the highest level. So, um, and he said this thing, and in the early days, you know, I had kidney failure, I had multiple addictions, but I'd also had this near-death spiritual experience, and I'd been led to meet this man, David Hawkins. I was just watching his DVDs, and there was this, um, there was this thing, and it transformed my life. And it's probably since that time I've been, nearly been to a twelve-step meeting every single day, for the last fifteen years. And he said, and there's there was this guy, on one of his videos, and he came in and he said, um, what was it? His something like I can't remember exactly. Something like uh, his wife, he, he he and his wife had joined a cult. And they'd had a kid, and the kid was in a lot of trouble, and the wife had just taken the kid. And he was like in tremendous pain and suffering that he can't intervene, the kid and the wife, because they'd gone off totally in a different direction. And he was absolutely... And, and Hawkins said to him, like, you know, uh, he said this thing, it's like, where you're at, where you're trying to rescue the kid and the wife in, the, in this cult of a low vibration, in, when you're in that energy, of wanting to fix it, you've got a very low vibration and you've got no chance because your vibration is so low, you're not going to get any miracles, you're not going to get any divine help because you're just focusing on changing the problem to get it better. You know, you're just in total angst and totally disconnected spiritually. He said, what you need to do is you need to, uh, he recommended he join Al Anon um, and get to a 12 step group. And he said, look, you know, and, and I, you know, I'd, I'd consumed all his books, like, um, please just take what you want, leave the rest if you find anything I say unuseful, but, like, um, uh, therapy, therapy generally tends to calibrate about 400, and it's, it, it's useful, excuse me, I'll be back one second. Uh, I think it's running. I've changed chair, I've got such a lot of pain. Come on, come on. I'm booking maybe it's just a bit too hot. Thank you. You're okay, I'm recording, is that right? Okay. Oh, sorry. No, it's all right, because I don't want people saying cut cut this out because <laughs> I just said something. But um, um all right, so um oh yes. So you need like a twelve step group is calibrated at five forty. It's the minimum vibration that's required to stop addiction. It's unconditional love. You know, you must not hold on to resentment no matter what. There is no excuse for a justified resentment. That will eventually tune you up to unconditional love. And that's the minimum vibration to invite the miraculous in. That's the minimum vibration for miracles to be attracted into your life if you hold to those principles. 
So it's not at a thousand, so it's not a level of non-duality, your top step group is not. So it's got, it's got a lot of distortions in it, but it's still uh, good enough to stop addiction. Um, so, and then he said, if you start vibrating at that and have the group support at a minimum vibration of 540, uh, a minimum vibration of unconditional love, then you'll, there'll be enough power that miraculous answers will start coming into your life. Uh, to sort it out, because the field of power that you'll be soaked in will invite miracles, and the miracles will eventually sort it out. But if you just stay stuck in your head, trying to control the situation, your vibration will, is not going to be uh, anything that can deal with the cult. You know, you just haven't got it. So you need to be aligned with the, the highest vibration group you can, and be in the in the energy of that of that vibrational field uh, on a. Um, on a daily basis, um, not on a daily basis, but on a regular basis, on a regular basis, so that basically your vibration is down there, and if you just keep going to these groups at, at that level of 540, then eventually your vibration will sync with that as long as you're going regularly. You'll just sync with the group vibration, and then the miracles will be attracted in because that's the minimum vibration you require. Like if you went to, for example, I don't know, if he was reading something like uh, going over his uh, childhood every day, that wouldn't be enough to invite miracles into the situation. You need at least miracles. Come in. Uh, I was just thinking that when we talk about 12-step groups calibrating at 540, yes, yeah. in their purest form, yes, but then within the structure of the groups there are individuals and individual egos and meetings are often aligning to the in the people the egos of the people on the committee there's conflict within these groups and i've seen some crazy shit go down in groups over the years um i mean i won't even go into that but yes. but i don't know it, it's like there is this there's, there's the there is the big picture the 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 12 step program can induce a spiritual experience mm -hmm. uh, and I've had that myself on a, new, a number of occasions and that experience has matched any other spiritual experience I've had elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But then I've been in some pretty low vibrational situations within the groups as well and, and, and so it's, I, I personally do find it difficult to navigate certain aspects. I mean, there are sometimes you will go to a meeting and it feels like mentioning God is a dirty word. Yes. Uh, and, and so it's, it, it, there is, it does seem to be, there seem to be a lot of grey areas rather than that just to go to a meeting and it's going to be absolutely, you're going to get elevated. I absolutely agree, agree with you. I mean, of course, if you've got like three mad people who haven't worked the steps running a 12-step group, it's, there's not going to be a 12-step field available in that. But, you know, generally speaking, um, you'll eventually find a few strong groups. I know COVID is, has sort of decimated the 12-step groups to some extent. But in general, as long as there's two or three, four old-timers in a group together, the, the energy field should be enough to stop addiction. Mm. So once he said that, it was like, OK, 540. And, and, and the Course in Miracle Lessons are calibrating at 600. But generally, if you want a group of people, where you get a few old timers who've gone through the steps, that should be at least a minimum of unconditional love. And that's the minimum required for miracles. Now, at, like things like therapy are, are useful. They're, I mean, calibrate's quite high, 400. It's not below 200, so it's useful. But it's not, it's not gonna break down the ego and invite a higher energy and the miraculous. So it's on a different level, which is useful, but it's not the level of the miraculous. So I go, okay. And I, I got the thing of like, even if you haven't got the energy, if you go to a group of a higher energy, you're eventually going to tune in to that, that group energy. I'm not saying uh, like 12-step groups are the highest vibration on the planet. No, I'm not saying that. But generally speaking, I'd say like in, in London, where I live, um, uh, like I know that, for example, AA had about 700, used to have about 700 meetings a week. Uh, you know, not even the Course in Miracles has that level and, and regularity of, of meetings running around the whole place. So it's like, and then if I sit in my, let's say I sit in my room, that calibrates at, let's say, 200. Or if I sit in the park, that's 200. If I go to a therapy group, that's going to be calibrating at 400. It's still quite mental. It's not really 
releasing the ego and trying to tune into something beyond the ego. So, uh, but it's going to be useful. It's a lot higher than below 200, so it has its power. Uh, and then, of course, if there was a, an enlightened sage, if Buddha was next door, and I could visit Buddha every every day, then I'd forget the twelve steps. I'd just be going and sitting in, next to Buddha every day, because obviously. But that, so that's the thing, and I got that, and I wanted to get rid of my, all my illnesses and darkness as quickly as possible. So I said, it's quite the thing, you know. It's like if you, I've got a choice, you know, I could go to like a rave club every day that covers below two hundred. And I'll be sinking into or addiction, the energy of addiction. I could go to, I mean, like a yoga group, probably kind of bred about 300. Uh, if I'm just doing poses and, and whatever, uh, it's still better than 200. So I could see, like, you know, how fast do I want to get well? You know, I mean, if there were, if there was something better and more frequent than a 12-step group with a better energy, then of course I'd forget the 12-step groups. But it just seems to be that, I mean, churches uh, and religious organizations tend to calibrate around 400. So, because there's a certain level, uh, significant distortions of truth within a lot of the spiritual texts. So, the, like, the 12 steps is much more pure, so you, at least you get to unconditional love. Or if you have a guru, or a Course in Miracles group with a lot of enlightened individuals in that, that would, of course, be higher. Then, uh, 12 step, like when, um, like if Hawkins was in London, I mean, I, you know, I forget the 12-step groups, I could see them every day, because uh, that would be, you know, I, I, my, my guess is you can't break them almost at the highest level. So it'd be like going to meet Jesus every day, a 12-step, we're going to meet Jesus every day, we're going to go to a 12-step group. But in terms of a 12-step group in my living room, I would say a 12-step group where all these people come together and say the 12 steps and say the serenity prayer and they start the meeting off and the end it. And the intention of the 12 steps is like guiding everyone to try and live by these spiritual principles. It, it, you know, when two or more are gathered uh, in the name of, of holiness, you know, it does in, it does increase the vibration. Then I mean, sitting sitting alone in my in my room, doing a course of miracles. So it'd be faster if I could be in a powerful group of course of miracles students, than if I'm just sitting alone in my room. And I'd choose a twelve step uh, twelve step groups over the thing. Now on the thing of I mean, the ego, <clears throat> I mean, I, I had this in going to new 12-step fellowships where I get extremely judgmental that they, this fellowship is doing a lot of unspiritual stuff and I get very, very judgmental uh, and go, well, it's not as good as my home meetings <laughs> or it's not as good as this fellowship. I mean, my head would go off and all these resentments. But, you know, sometimes I've needed those for other fellowships I've joined later on. And I've gone there and I have to go through this process where you know, I have resentments against the fellowship, I have resentments against the purity of the spiritual teachings, I have resentments against some of the individuals in the group. And I go, but I need, but this is the, these are the best few groups I can find of the highest vibration in that particular fellowship. So I just keep going, have these, and then do the Course in Miracles, do, do my step tens and pray for the individuals, and then do my transcending work and just try and make the, dis make the individuals I don't like disappear so that I, I don't notice them. I go, well, it's not a problem. The, the individual's not a problem. They might be very sick. But it's my problem is that I'm registering them. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so, so what if that individual... I mean, there's a psychopath in the group that's shouting and screaming. But the, why... Because I, I knew this, because I shared it with other people who go to the groups. You know, like, you find in the groups, like, even if, you know, when you're, when you're really connected, like, you transcend different archetypes of human beings. You know, like uh, there is a certain type of person who's like totally nuts and screams and shouts and is like weird in a group. So you just keep doing the transcending work and eventually what happens is you don't notice them any longer. It's like even though they would come in and a lot of the other people might be disrupted, you won't get disrupted. You just don't notice it any longer. And then, you know, there's certain things like this fellowship is much less spiritual than my other fellowship. And they do, and then, you know, they, they don't like saying God. You know, people look at me in a weird way when I say God, you know. So I just have to do a lot of spiritual work around, and then I don't notice that either. But there, it is a co-thing. It's like if I transcend my stuff with the fellowship uh, and with the individuals within the fellowship after I go through that phase because I need the fellowship, otherwise I won't go there. Then it's like I enjoy it. It's like I go there, and it's just as wonderful. So you could you could say that, you, um, and also. Uh, what will happen is as I do the spiritual work in that fellowship, 
is that I'll, I'll find the groups that I like, with the individuals I like, and even if I have to go to uh, uh, the groups that I like, is a process will go where I have to accept certain people and forgive them and transcend them until they disappear. And either they'll go away or they'll stay and I won't notice them and I'll feel absolute love and bliss in that fellowship. And I've had that, where I've gone from my, my home fellowships to other fellowships where I thought the vibration is low, the individual is low, and the amount of chaos is low. But after a while, I enjoy them. Just make it be a lie to say as much as the, the ones which I think are stronger and stronger fellowships with higher levels of truth, but I still enjoy them. And it's like, yeah, it's like I get this thing where it's like, of course it's possible to love, love people. If you, if you let go of your resentments, even the ones that you thought initially were unlovable become lovable. You know, and and or you don't, you just they just disappear. You just don't even track them, because everything you found objectionable in them disappears. And then what happens? The mystical thing happens. The miracle happens. Is there's nothing wrong with the fellowship? And uh, you know, if I'm going to a fellowship for money, uh, there's no, it's not unspiritual, and and the finances start to get smoother, and everything works. So it's just like, um, and. Uh, you could say it's like my assignment to go to that fellowship and love the fellowship, you know. So, um, uh, and I do that with my sponsees, you know. They often sponsees, you know, they're going into these rooms and they, they don't like the fellowship, they don't like the people in the fellowship. And then you have to tell them those are resentments. You have to transcend those. Um, and you can go to a different meeting or a different fellowship, but eventually you, you have to like work on those and transcend those. So there is a thing, I mean, should you go to a place which you don't like is no use? No, I'm not, that's not what I'm saying, but if there is utility, it's not necessarily, you know, and you need, there's something on offer that you feel you, that was good there, like to be in a group of spiritual people and it's the highest available, it might not be amazing, then, then go, going there and then transcending it, and then it becomes wonderful. So that's my experience of... Um,